Hello, this is Lauren, and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at uh, the state of Palestine, the birth chart for Palestine, looking at uh, what's going on between now and the first few months of 2027, because this is really going to be positive for Palestine, albeit they're going to need to get through quite a few things between now and the start of 2027. And we're also going to look at first, because this is just really so, uh, in many ways, mind-blowing, but also uh, it explains a lot between the relationship between these two countries. So we're going to look at that. Now, let's just start here by saying that the birth chart for Palestine was <clears throat> the proclamation of independence by Yasser Arafat that took place on November 15th, 1988 at midnight 40 minutes in Algiers, Algeria. And we use that as the birthplace because in astrology, time and space is everything. And regardless of if we relocate in our lives to another place, we're always using the birth place when we're looking at future transits, etc. Okay, so take a look at this because this is really just pretty unbelievable. I'm putting the Palestine birth chart in the middle, uh, in the inner wheel, we could say, in blue, and Israel is on the outer wheel. Uh, you can look at the video that I've done for the birth time rectification of Israel and also for the war predictions using Israel's birth chart. At any rate, the first thing you're going to see is unbelievable. Mars in the Israeli birth chart is right on top, smack on the ascendant of Palestine. And we have to understand here that Mars is the planet not only of war, but of aggression, combativeness, uh, defensiveness, impulsivity. Uh, what else could we say? I mean, if you're in a relationship with somebody uh, that has Mars on your ascendant descendant, you would definitely feel that energy. Um, understanding here that the ascendant is the people of a nation. And so we've got this aggressive Mars smack dab on top of the people of Palestine. Now, secondary to that, just as important, notice how the son of Israel is at the top of the chart at about 22 degrees, 22, 23 of Taurus. And where is the son of Palestine? It's in the opposite position. Pretty incredible. 22, 23 degrees of Scorpio. Now, understand that the midheaven, the top of the chart here of Palestine is the government in power. It is uh, the head of state. And who's in control here? Well, obviously, it's like having a parent uh, or an authority figure right on top of you. Having uh, the son, which is the head of state as well, at the bottom of the chart for Palestine, the power uh, position is, is pretty dynamic within this relationship, okay? Now, the third thing I want to bring to your attention, the third point here, is that, and this is also pretty mind-blowing, and I'm just going to look here at the chart uh, of this synastry, so bear with me here as I bring this up. We've got the North Node. Now, understand, here we have Israel's Mercury exactly at 10 degrees of Gemini, squaring into the nodal axis, the north node and the south node, of Palestine. We also have, pretty unbelievable, if you look at the bottom of the chart in Palestine in blue, we've got their Mercury at 13 degrees of Scorpio, completely opposed the north node. Okay, so we've got the planet Mercury in both horoscopes aspecting the north node of the other. The north node is also the people of the nation. Now, when you have the planet Mercury, for example, <clears throat> as 
expecting. Uh, the North Node. This is the mindset of the people. Um, the tie between these two nations is going to be very strong. Involved with what? Powerfully focused in the mind, in the thinking process, in communications, in the collective consciousness of the people. And I was just looking at uh, some notes here from astrologer Jeffrey Green, which is uh, who created evolutionary astrology. And he says that when you have a planet squaring into uh, the nodal axis, as Israel does, with Palestine's north node, or nodal axis, the evolutionary and karmic condition exists wherein these two countries have had prior life connections in which something has occurred that has caused a separation to occur between them. Thus, the relationship has been interrupted. It has not come to completion. The intention in, in this life is to repeat those conditions or situations in this life in order for the relationship to move forward, to evolve and resolve. So I thought that was quite fascinating in terms of the synastry between the two charts. And just one other point that I want to make here, which <laughs> explains things quite well, having Mars right on your ascendant, Israel's Mars on your ascendant, their sun on the midheaven. You know, there was a comment here or a footnote uh, under in Wikipedia under Palestine, the nation of Palestine, where the Human Rights Watch did an article in the middle of 2022 entitled, quote-unquote, Gaza, Israel's open-air prison. That's exactly what that situation is. Okay, let's look now at the transits of what's going on here between Israel, uh, excuse me, uh, in Palestine's birth chart. Now, as I showed you uh, in Israel's transits, you know, they currently have Uranus conjunct the sun and square to Mars in 2024, 2025, leading into March of 2026. And so this is a war situation, uh, as I explained in that video. Now, uh, let me think of where I want to go. Yes, so we understand that for Palestine, again, Uranus, transiting Uranus, it's conjunct Israel's sun, but it is a opposed the sun of Palestine, okay? And that transit is was going on or is going on from about August 2023. The retrograde hit, of course, at the end of September when the Gaza conflict with Israel started, and it finalizes in May of 2024. Simultaneously, Palestine, exactly between August and November of 2023, transiting Pluto was conjunct the, the moon of Palestine. I mean, talk about emotional intensity. Uh, and, of course, we all know the details of what's going on here. Um, now, let's first focus on transiting Uranus in Palestine's chart, because what is it going to do? When it finishes opposing the sun in May of 2024, in June of 2024, it will conjunct the midheaven. We could say that there's probably an important event that's going to go on around May-June of 2024. So Uranus will conjunct the midheaven until March of 2025. And that coincides with the last hit in Israel's chart of Uranus conjunct their sun and squaring Mars. And we've already talked about in that chart about uh, Uranus with Mars. This is absolutely a war-type, impulsive, bombastic action. And there were wars in the past when Israel had that transit. And what's also important here is that transiting Uranus, after it's conjunct the midheaven until March of 2025, it will then go on to square the ascendant, which are the people, 
And the final thing it will do, and that will be about mid-2025 until about April 2026, when Uranus in the Israel chart is finishing up its square to Mars. And that's why my prediction was until about March, April of 2026, we do probably have a war situation going on. Continuing here, the positive here is that Uranus will then go on to conjunct Jupiter. Very positive in about June of 2026, leading up to about March. I have to tell you that January, February, March 2027, I could highlight February 2027, is going to be really very important for Palestine as well as Israel. But this is a beneficial measurement which symbolizes boundless optimism for Palestine and uh, a big break opportunity. And we're going to talk about the past here, the last time they had these transits, because you'll see that it will most likely, absolutely, I believe, have to do with uh, an independent state for Palestine. And this transit of Uranus... uh, opposing the sun of Palestine, conjunct the midheaven, squaring into the ascendant, conjunct Jupiter. This is all a call for independence and freedom and certainly an uprooting of their home, but at the same time searching for their independence and their um, their homeland, we could say. I don't want to overload the astrology, but in 2027, uh, not only will Uranus be conjunct Jupiter, very positive for Palestine, but also transiting Jupiter will conjunct their ascendant that year. And they will also, if you are into astrology, you'll understand the lunation cycle. They're coming into the harvest time, recognition, reward, uh, the full moon part of that cycle exactly in February of 2027, and this is what when they will get uh, what is they deserve, uh, a home. Now, it's very important to look at what happened the last time transiting Uranus was in the same, or aspecting the sun, the midheaven, the ascendant, and Jupiter. And if we go back to the last time that occurred, it was between mid-2012 and uh, February of 2016. And what's important here is, yes, there was a war, as I explained in the previous video. There was the Gaza uh, war with Hamas in 2014. However, what occurred in 2015, uh, as it was finalizing these transits, was that Uh, The international criminal courts recognized Palestine as a state in 2015, as well as the Vatican in 2015, and there was a UN resolution uh, for Palestine for their sovereignty over natural resources. So there were positive things that came out of, unfortunately, uh, a war situation. So I do believe that there's going to be positive things occurring here. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Uh, We could say the second half of 2026 leading into the first few months of 2027. The previous time before that was between 2001 and the, let me just look at my notes here, about February 2004. And keep in mind that it was in 2002 that Israel Uh, began the construction of the barrier around the West Bank, okay? And also during that period, which I found interesting, and I'm just shifting to my notes here, was that in that 2003-2004 period, toward the latter part of 2003 into January of 2004, There was a written statement submitted by Palestine to the International Court of Justice uh, about legal consequences of the construction of a wall in the occupied Palestine territory and, as well, illegal Israeli actions in occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of the occupied 
Palestinian territory. So, of course, we already know uh, that there are um, a lot of opposition and human rights with regard to what Israel is doing. At any rate, something else I just want to bring in here, of course, is between this time now and the start of 2027, we do have Neptune transits occurring in Palestine's horoscope. Not easy. This is going to be uh, transiting Neptune square Uranus uh, in 2024, leading into March of 2025, and then in April of 2025, transiting Neptune will square Saturn and we could just put that together and say that that is irritability, loss of ego focus, loss of ambition, depression, sense of being wronged. And so, yes, there is that sense of, you know, how can this be happening? Um, also, you, we will have an extended transit here of transiting Neptune conjunct Mars from about March of 2025 straight through to January of 2027. And what is that transit about? That transit is the sense of disappointment uh, with what's been going on uh, and looking for where the grass is greener. And this is why, as well as that transit finishes up with Neptune and all of the confusion and the bewilderment and the deception involved here, they will, I believe, get their glory Absolutely, in 2027, in the first few months. And so it's going to be very, very, very important what goes on. I can't emphasize this enough in the first three months of 2027. Um, and that's what I have to really share with you uh, without giving, throwing too much astrology at you. So we've definitely, definitely got a critical war situation going on uh, that's going to run for quite a while. We're looking at two years of this conflict, at least, and some resolution coming in 2026, possibly in the second half of 2026, but definitely into the first quarter of 2027. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, blessings to everybody uh, <clears throat> involved with this crisis and um, hope for the Palestinian people and where it will take them. Sometimes, unfortunately, in life, we have to go through darkness before we come into the light. Um, but I do believe the light is coming for Palestine, albeit in a, a few years. Okay, thank you so much for listening. God bless, and be well until the next video.